Hey guys, hope you're well. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to get your orange peel paint looking smooth by sanding, cutting, and buffing. I've just recently painted my VL here at home under this exact carport in this exact location. And the gun settings weren't quite correct and it does look a little bit orange peely and I want it to look nice and reflective. So I'm gonna be using some sandpaper, a buffer, and some compound and show you guys the before and after results. So if you're doing a paint job at home, then you can follow these methods. Um, I'm not a professional or expert at this, so do double check your references or speak with a professional. I'm just kind of winging it at home. So yeah, let's get into it. As you can see, here's a little spot which I've sanded already. It's lost the gloss. And just here is a part where you can see the orange peel in the paint job. When you're an inexperienced painter like myself, and you don't know how to set up your gun properly and you don't have a proper booth and all those kind of things. The paint job doesn't come out as you expect. However, it can be improved. It does take a lot more work though. So ultimately you wanna get the paint job looking good off the gun because that's minimal amount of work. But in this case, we have orange peel. So I'm gonna show you how we can get this orange peel out. No, this video is not sponsored by Black Widow Car Security Systems. All right, so I've got this at a point where you can hopefully see the orange peel along here. So this is not perfect reflection. You can see it. And what I'm gonna do is sand this down with 1200 sandpaper, which is very, very fine sandpaper. And then I'm gonna go over it again with 2000. Then I'll go over it again with 3000. Then I'm gonna use cutting compound on top of it. And then way later on, I'm gonna do machine polish. I'm gonna get this looking perfect. Let's go. All right, so I've got here a bucket of water and my 1200 sandpaper gonna do a wet sand. So the reason that we wet sand is so the paper doesn't get clogged. And one thing you wanna make sure is that there's no dirt or rocks or anything on the paper. This is one mistake I've made before. So the paper needs to be clean, very clean. Because if I do have a little rock or a little piece of something on here and I'm sanding, that is gonna then gouge the paint in more than we want to, isn't it? So there we go. So I'm just gonna do this top section here as an example. So I'm using a block to make sure it's perfectly flat. If I use my hand without a block, my fingers will then indent the paint. So a block is essential. You can buy these blocks here from like Autobahn or you can even use a block of wood. You just wanna make sure it's perfectly flat. This one here I've got from Paint Away in Sunshine, which is where I get all my paint stuff from. And it's best to sand in cross hatch motion. This is just a small little area that you guys can see as an example. And as I'm sanding, what you can do then is wipe away the water with a clean rag and you'll actually see the orange peel start to come out. You can actually see it here. Um, let me just sand it a little bit more. But as it dries, sometimes I get my blower out, which is the car blower to dry the car. Cause when it's dry, then you can really see all the little imperfections. You can see dust, all that kind of stuff. So here it is. You can actually see how bad it is. So obviously where it's still shiny, that's where the sandpaper hasn't hit. And that's how ripply it actually is. So we wanna keep sanding until that is completely flat. Now I painted this car myself. Don't try this on your car if you have no idea how much clear is on the paint. Now when I'm sanding, if I'm seeing red coming through on my sandpaper, then I know that I'm sanding into the base coat. So if you didn't know, the way this paint system works is you put down the color, and then on top of the color, there's color, and then on top of that, there's clear and I'm sanding only the clear. If I go through to the base coat, I have to repaint this panel or I have to re-clear that section. So I'm gonna keep going until that's completely flat, but that's just to show you what's happening. Always holding the block flat. See how on my sandpaper, it's just white. That's the clear coat. If you see the color of the car coming through that, you have to be worried unless your car is a single stage paint, which means the clear's in the color. But I don't think you can have a metallic paint with that. Dry it off again and have a look. Just gonna wait for that to dry. So when I've painted this, I've purposely put a lot of clear on it, knowing that I'm gonna do this because my gun settings aren't perfect and the situations aren't perfect. I painted this car at home under my carport, if you didn't know. So that's actually looking a lot better. See, we can see less of the orange peel there. So it's looking pretty much the same. A little bit here, a little bit on the top and there. Try not to take off too much too, because then we're gonna buff as well, which is pretty much like sandpaper in a bottle. So next up, I'm going to change my sandpaper to 2000 grit. The higher the number on the sandpaper, the finer it is. 
I know a lot of you guys know that, but there's a lot of people who probably don't know that either. So I have to say it, let that dry off. Yep, just a couple little spots here. Oh, super dusty right now. So this is your 2000 grit sandpaper, 3M I'm using, 2000. And now you can see here that there is no more orange peel, it's completely flat. Here's a part here that I didn't do properly, which I'm not gonna do this part just now, I'm just doing this edge. But you can see how that, that's not completely flat. So this is good to now get some 2000 sandpaper on. So this, using the 2000 is just gonna help me buff it up a lot quicker. You probably can buff it with the 1200, but you'll be there for longer. So yeah, you spend your time sanding or buffing. I think it's quicker to do the sanding. Probably could just use 2000, but it'll take longer. You might burn through more paper. It's a little bit of an imperfection there. And here as well, it depends how picky you are. I mean, you can sit here and spend your whole life doing your paint job on your car. But yeah, I'm not really going for a show car job, just don't want it to look completely crap. So another method of sanding you can use on a pad, which is not as nice, but it's faster, is these 3000 grit pads, which I got from Paint Away in Sunshine, Victoria. I'm sure your local parts, uh, your local paint store will have something like this. It does have what's called an interface pad. See this little spongy part? So it doesn't dig in too hard, but this will get, I do have 3000 paper you can use on a block, but this will help make it faster if you want to do a car and it's not that bad you can just use this straight off the um thing so i'm just going to use this for the last little section and this you use dry you don't use a you don't use water so next step is to use some cutting compounds so i'm using this 3m rubbing compounds you can use juice there's other brands out there i think they're all pretty much the same so you also want to get a brand new very very clean microfiber towel Make sure it doesn't have any dust, dirt, whatever in it. Otherwise you're gonna scratch. Gonna pop that in my pocket. And then we're gonna, I'm using like a little bit of an old pad here, which is probably not ideal, but what I'm gonna do is bring all of the solution to the front and then just put a little bit on there. You don't need crazy amounts and you can do it multiple times. So this is gonna polish it up now. We're gonna get that gloss happening again. Hopefully the focus stays. So one thing you wanna do before you start actually going is Put the pad down and then just smear it around a bit because otherwise if you go straight away it'll end up flicking everywhere which is something all the newbies forget and start off on a low speed just massaging it in and of course my fucking powerpoint's not turned on all right here we go there it goes flicking around already you don't want to hold it in one spot for too long too because you'll burn a you heat it up and then you might burn through. So just start off slow. Try to hold the thing flat as possible. Speed it up a bit. You see the gloss coming out. So this is a great example here. And you can see along there, this is the old un unsanded, uncut and buff section. And then you move up to here and you can see how nice and glossy that is. You can see the reflection. A good way to know if it's good is that you can read something that's like, say, back here. So if I come down to here, I refocus. You can see in the paint, there's like all that peel. And if I come up to that one, it's smooth. Show the before there and the after. So then the next step after this is to use a machine polish and then you want to seal it with some kind of ceramic coating, wax, some, some protectant. Ripley. And then you just got to keep continuing that process for the rest of the whole car. As you can see, that looks a lot smoother than it was before. You come down here, you can see it's rough. So that's one way of making your paint job look good when you're an amateur. Even the way it feels like this just feels so smooth and then along here is rough. You can feel a little even, there's little bits of dust in there. Probably should have done that ages ago. Yeah, should have put that light on ages ago. Um, this is what it's looking like after I've sanded the whole thing. So I'm not sure how much of that you can see. So now you can see all the imperfections in the paint. You can see dust in it, all the little spots. Like there's probably some dint here that wasn't fixed properly. You can see the orange peel, 
another bit of dust there. Obviously it's not sanded full properly here. And this is the bit that we just fixed. And you can see where I've accidentally sanded over it a little bit. It's hard to believe that this now, in that state that it's in, will end up looking like that. You can also use a paint thickness gauge, which you can buy on eBay, which I'll eventually have on my website and store, that you can put onto the car and it'll tell you how deep the paint is. But that it is telling you primer and base coat and clear all in one. So you just don't know how much clear is on it. I've caked the clear on this because I painted it myself. Got a lot of sanding to do. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Consider subscribing if you want to watch more car content. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.